Good morning, church. It is so good to see everyone here this morning. There are some announcements in your bulletin um, that, and we, I know we've got a few announcements that's going to be made. Uh, one announcement that's not in your bulletin yet because I don't have a lot of details. We are doing confirmation this year, and we're going to be doing it with West Branch and Springdale. So if you are middle school age or you know of somebody who is middle school age and wants to be in confirmation, please let me know. That means you. So that way we can get a good number, and uh, between all of us, all three of our churches, we should have a great class. So I know there's some announcements. Uh, Melanie? So we'll try to get back to Hawkeyes that morning for the football game. Hawkeyes won the football game. Yes, they did. Dennis? Dennis, will you make sure your microphone's on? I'm not sure it's on. So try again. Next Sunday, we'll be serving, Mrs. Men will be serving pancakes. After the service, so our fifth Sunday pancake breakfast. I also wanted to mention that uh, normally our United Methodist men's meeting is on October 5th, but the women have a large group meeting on October 5th, so we moved the Methodist men's meeting in October to October 12th. So uh, anybody that can attend, that would be great. The Johnson County Sheriff will be there as our speaker on October 12th. Okay, so. United Methodist Women in Faith is October 5th, and the United Methodist Men is October 13th. Okay, boy. And you've probably seen the bulletin the next Saturday. There'll be some church cleanup and maintenance, so we're certainly going to ask anybody to come and help with that from 9 to 12. Is there a show of hands at this time? Those people who know they'll be here. All right, thank you. If you so, can't be here next week, then be, let we'll us be, know. Yep, much appreciated. So we got some outside stuff to do, nothing heavy. It's just all just getting rid of some stuff outside and a little bit of street clean up inside and then on the exterior. So thank you and we look forward to seeing you next week. Yep. And if you can't be here, contact Boyd or Donna or Nancy and they'll give you an assignment and you can just do it on your own time. So not a big deal. Any other announcements? Oh, Jeannie. Yes. Hi. Um, Neil and I would like to thank all of you for your prayers, thoughts, cards, phone calls. We made it. Thanks to God. And God bless all of you. It is so good to see Neil and Deanna. Or just Deanna. Diana. It's great to uh, have, you, have you both back with us. Other announcements? Anything that needs to be made? We do have a birthday. Corey has a birthday. We like embarrassing Corey. So we're going to sing happy birthday to Corey. Happy Corey, I do have to say, your daughter is the one who told me. <laughs> I invite you now to uh, stand and greet your neighbor with peace of the Lord be with you. I do invite you now as we begin our morning worship 
to join together in our call to worship. Lord, we love you with our entire being. Another way we respond is through music, when we sing our praises to you. All right, so there's got to be joy in your heart, right? I invite you to stand and join with us as we sing all creatures of our God and King. may be seated. Our children's moment this morning, I am not going to do. I am going to turn it over to Cindy. Hey, do we have a, a Donna Stella? Um, I'm going to turn it over to Cindy because she has come on up. You guys can all still come up. Cindy won't bite. But Cindy has a special presentation. morning. Um, we have a special presentation to give this morning. Um, and we, it's about the Bible. It's a Bible presentation this morning. And we have Jade and Cora Sanders here, and they are going to uh, receive their Bibles this morning. So we're so glad that you're all here to be part of this special time for them. Um, the Bible is a special gift from God that helps us to live and grow and according to God's promises. And there are many treasures in the stories that are in poems found in our Bible. And we have a Bible. It looks a little different right now, doesn't it? Because it has some layers of paper on it. So you guys get to be the unwrappers this morning. And we're going to do one layer at a time. And I'll tell you when it's time to do the first layer and then each layer after that. And you don't have to be shy when it comes time to rip those layers off. <laughs> so our first one is, has brown paper on the outside. You know this, right? It looks kind of ordinary right now. But we know the Bible was written a long, long time ago. And some parts of the Bible were written more than a thousand years um, before Christ was born. And some of the stories come from a time before people could even write. So people would just tell stories to one another. It's the most important book of our faith. 
And this brown paper reminds us of how old the stories are. So we're going to ask you to rip off that brown layer of paper. Now we'll clean it up when we're done. <laughs> now, this next, we have gold wrapping paper. And this is a reminder that our Bible is very valuable and is filled with promises from God. Um, our Bible is both old and valuable. So now you can remove the gold paper. Let's see what's next. Well, this next one looks interesting. Hmm. I think it's a comic strip for funny papers, okay, from the newspaper. And the Bible's filled with lots of stories. And you hear them in worship. And there are adventure stories, and there are stories with, um, with villains and heroes, and stories of how just ordinary people lived during the time um, that the Bible was written. And it also talks about how people had challenges and the challenges and how they faced them and they were able to go on. So go ahead and remove the comic paper, paper up front layer. We're almost there, girls. <laughs> the next is this white paper. And the white paper reminds us that the Bible is not only old and valuable and entertaining, but it's a gift from God. And it came from people who had a special understanding of God. So let's go ahead and rip off that last layer. And there it is. It's okay. That's all right. We'll wait. It's okay. Got it. <laughs> okay. Well, there, there we finally got to the good stuff. We got to our Bible, and it is made up of 66 books organized into the Old Testament and the New Testament. And it's not like any other book, because when we read it, we discover what God is like and God's promises to us. Um, let's pray. Thank you, God, for the many treasures you have provided in the Bible. Bless Jade and Cora as they start their journey to learn more about you as they read the stories in their own Bibles. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Congratulations to both of you on the honor it is for you to have those Bibles. You guys can go back and sit down now. And at this point in time, our special music is in our choir that's up here, but we invite you to listen to our bells. And if you'd like to be in an attitude of prayer, that would be wonderful.
Thank you to our bells. They were short a couple today, so thank you for your wonderful music. Uh, this is the time in our worship service in which we join together in an attitude of prayer as we receive our morning offering. Let us receive our offering. <laughs> Most gracious and holy Lord, you have brought joy into our hearts and into our lives in ways that we still have yet to understand and experience. So today, Lord, we want to give you a little joy as well. The gift of our lives as a way of saying thank you for all you've done for us. Our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, our witness, everything that we have, we give to you, Lord. And we know that as you accept these gifts, you will shower your blessings upon us to help those who do not know you. As we reach out in ministry, this is our prayer, Lord, for your acceptance of these gifts and for your blessings for all who receive from you. This is our prayer. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus, and all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. For our prayer time this morning, of course, we've been talking about uh, lifting up prayers for the leaders of our conference, uh, our bishop, our district superintendent, our cabinet. Uh, today, I also want to lift up um, the Focus Forward group. Uh, we meet this next weekend and continuing to learn how to lead and how to help us start uh, fresh for the next few years as we begin a new, uh, do this way of doing ministry. But I also want to lift up a couple of our ministries that you can continue to keep in prayer. Ministries that have been going on for a long time. Um, free lunch program. Think of all the people that are being fed with that the way that they are experienced God through the gifts that we give them. Um, so that's one. And then the in-gathering is another one. We've got the in-gathering coming up in about a month, is it? Um, so talk to Brenda if you have questions about that. But those gifts that we give through the in-gathering reach a lot of people in a lot of ways. Uh, our flood buckets have been delivered or are being delivered. 
um, that is part of a gift for all of God is for us. So there's a lot of people who will be who will be blessed by all of that. So those are the things that I lift up to you today to keep in your prayers this week. Let us first pray that we can. Oh, holy God. We sit in the sanctuary. Just to be in your presence. To feel your love. As we take that deep breath in from the week, we breathe in your holiness and we exhale all of the stuff from this past week that has caused us worry and sadness. Today is a new day. We lift up to you those prayer concerns that have already been made. We lift up to you the farmers and their safety as they begin the harvest. We lift up to you those that are in battle. Wars in our world. The apes that separate us. Personal conflict. All of those things that we know that your joy and your healing hand can can bring. Today, Lord, we're here to hear about your joy and how the joy that you give us goes deep within our soul and is a part of our entire being. makes us unique in the world so that we can spread that joy to all we know. This is our prayer. Open our hearts, our minds, and our souls to hear this message, to learn the importance of joy, To live rejoicing in you. This is our prayer. We pray it along with the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. This time, I would like to invite you to stand if you are able and join with us in all things bright and beautiful.
see them. Our, our scripture reading this morning is from Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 9 to 11. It's from the Common English Bible. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest of the scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all of the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Don't mourn or weep. They said this because all the people wept when they heard the words of the instruction. Go, eat your food and drink something sweet, he said to them, and send portions of this to the men who are making ready. This day is holy to our Lord. Don't be sad because the joy from the Lord is your strength. Levites also calmed all of the people, saying, Be quiet, for this day is holy. Don't be sad. Word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Do you remember the song, Don't Worry, Be Happy? That was a song that was inspired by a poster in an apartment building. I was going to sing it this morning, but the tune just completely went out of my head after we sang that last song. But it's one of those songs that has a, had a great message to it, but it also is one of those songs that kind of became trendy, and if you got it in your head, you were singing it all day long. Sorry if I got it in your head. But it's about being happy. It's about finding the joys of life, right? You know, don't worry about anything, just be happy. In our scripture this morning, the story of Nehemiah, this is just a very tiny part of the story of Nehemiah. That's an entirely different sermon series. Maybe we'll do someday, because it's a great story. Nehemiah has just found out, he works, he works uh, with King uh, Artaxas as a servant of his, one of his head servants. And so Nehemiah has just found out that his hometown, which is Jerusalem, there has been battles there. And some of the Jews have been captured by the Babylonians, and the walls of the city that protected the city have come tumbling down. That's not a good story, is it? Great song, I would say. But he, he goes and he talks to King Artaxus, and, and he decides to go back to, to Jerusalem and help rebuild those walls. And long story short, he gets the walls accomplished. But it's a battle. It doesn't happen overnight. There are challenges along in that story. But the wall gets built, and so what, what Nehemiah does is he sends for the instructions of Moses. Now think about this. Moses, when he goes into the promise, he gets ready to go to the promised land, because he doesn't make it into the promised land. But he has instructions for the Israelites, right? Ways in which they're supposed to live by. Right? Like the Ten Commandments. So, Nehemiah goes and he sends for those books, those scrolls, and he gathers the people around one of the walls and, and he starts to read all of those instructions. And the people start to cry. They weep. They're filled with sadness. They can't get unstuck from their sorrow. And Nehemiah says, wait a minute. Today is a holy day. This day is declared as a day of rejoicing, a day of celebration. Don't be sad. Be happy. Don't worry. Be happy. So, the reason this is pulled out today is because we're continuing in this journey with John Wesley on the marks of a Christian, and the second mark of a Christian, or a mark of a Methodist, characteristic of a Methodist in particular, is joy. It's rejoicing in God. So, how do, what does John Wesley mean by that? John Wesley had an experience, and we call it the Alder State Experience. Familiar with that? Know what that is? So John Wesley, he goes to this, un, un, he really doesn't want to go to this gathering. So the last place he wants to be is this gathering of the society group in, the, in Aldersgate. But he goes, 
you know, he's a good leader. So he goes. And as he's sitting there listening to somebody read Martin Luther's preface to the book of Romans, in his words, his heart is strangely broken. Something happened to him in listening to those words. God touched his heart in a way that brought joy to his heart. And suddenly, all the ministry, and he's, I mean, he's, he is a, a pastor at this time. He is clergy. But his life changes. Suddenly, it's no longer the book knowledge that he's going about talking. He's, he's talking from his heart. He's talking from the joy that he finds on this particular moment. What the heck is that mean? Right? What does that have to do with us today? That was John Wesley's experience, right? When I was student teaching, there was a little boy named Dave. I was in second grade. And this is back in the time period, remember, maybe your kids did the Book It program with Pizza, pizza Hut? You know, you had to read all the books, so with your parents, they had to sign off on them. And then if everybody brought them, then the class got a pizza party. Well, the teacher had told me that this class has never had a pizza party and they never will because David never turns in his book. How sad. So I knew I knew David's mom. So I had some opportunities just to give a little bit of encouragement. You know? So I had conversations with David and I had conversations with his mom. And so one day, closer to the end of my time in the class, I'm standing at the desk doing attendance in the morning, and all of a sudden, here comes David. This kid has a smile a mile long on his face. I mean, he is just beaming, grinning from ear to ear. His eyes are just sparkling. He doesn't say a word to me. He just does this. He did his booking. He got it turned in. Now, the others, others in the class didn't, because, you know, they never had, they knew that they would never get the party. I can't think of that story without smiling. And without thinking that in the worst times that I have, and if David can do his book in, I can get through the best. I see smiles on your face right now. Joy. That covers your entire being. That's the kind of joy and rejoicing that John Wesley and Nehemiah are talking about. The kind that comes from God that just covers every part of the year. I was trying to think of some comparisons to what this might be, and I don't even think this is close, but people have told me that when they were proposed to, you know, when they heard the words, will you marry me? And then when they heard the words, yes, they were filled with joy. Is that true? <laughs> Other people have told me that when they hold their child in their hands for the first time, and they look into that second place, they are filled with joy. Yes? So you can be better at that. Yes? Okay. For my own personal experience, there's times in my life when somebody has come up to me and said something to me, and I'll take a perfect example for this. And it's very humbling, but it was very joyous. One of the churches that I have served in, you've heard me talk about it, and the investments that I had, and, and the life, the journey of, of part of that church. My very last day, the, the staff terrorists decided they were going to do a open house farewell. I mean, I lived in this town for 12 years. I knew everybody in town, right? Most of them. The first couple that was there was a gentleman named Jeremy. His dad was the first investment of the couple. And it was quite a journey. He was the last one to leave that open house. And he came up to me, and he hugged me and kissed me. And he came up to me, 
with tears in his eyes, and he kissed my forehead, and he said, thank you for giving me back. Thank you for bringing me back to life. Wow. Is that not what ministry is about? As humbling as that was, it fed my soul. It was a joy that God was able to work through me. And how do I get that joy? Well, it kind of goes back to last week's conversation that we had. It's a response to God's love and God's grace within us. That unconditional love that God gives us. That grace that gives us a fresh start in life. Part of that is a response that we're going to accept that God loves us for who we are. And our hearts are filled with joy. You know, there have been times in ministry, and I'm sure there's times in your life too, where you love your job, but you've had it with your job. You know, it's time to get the Sunday paper and see what kind of, oh, it's not Sunday paper anymore, but um, it's time to get the Sunday paper and start looking through the wanted ads and to see, okay, what, what's my next step in career going to be? I've done that. Do you know what happens every time I do that? All of a sudden, I start thinking about the joy of ministry. The good things that have happened. God just suddenly fills me with those memories. And then I realize this is not a job. This is a calling. And God has given me joy to get through those difficult times. And there's been difficult times. But I also have a friend that in those difficult times, she only allows me to, to stay in that wallow for about 24 hours. And then she'll say, that's it, you're done. And we start counting the joys. And pretty soon, in a text message or in a phone call, she'll say, I can see the smile on your face. See, that smile is not just something that you look at. It's what you hear in voices. It's what you feel in the conversation. It's deeper than just seeing a smile on somebody's face. It's a response to the love that God has for you. John Wesley, when he felt that, that joy in his heart, Aldersgate, he went out and did ministry totally different. It was about transformation, not just understanding who God is. But how do these scriptures, how do life, how does life experiences change our hearts? And how is that shown in the world? I had my professional interview last week with the district superintendent. So that's kind of my evaluation. The district superintendent and I kind of get together and we chat and there's issues that he knows about. That's what we talk about. No issues. Don't panic. He's not going to move me. So don't panic. But he and I were talking and the very first thing that he said to me was, How is, what's going on at St. Mark's High St. Mark's? We have met for an hour, and that took about 15 minutes because everything was going so well. He could see the joy within me without hearing too much of the story to know that life is going well here. I can look at your faces and I can tell life is changing for you as well. From the moment I got here until the day I leave, We'll have challenges, but we'll have great joy. 
think of where you were two years ago today. Think of where you are now. What is the joy that God has filled your heart with? That you keep going back to in those difficult times that brings that smile back to you that you can say, huh, okay, God, I get it. I got to keep going. That's how God has changed your life. That's transformation. And the more we get into ministry, and you start seeing lives change, and people growing closer to God by the work that you do, by the way you talk, the things you offer, how you just are around them, those are the moments I want you to look for. Because you're a disciple, just like I am. Ministry happens because of you as well as of me. And it's that joy that comes from the love of God. So as a kid, my my mom was always, <laughs> she was always in church. You know, people thought she would be in church. But she did a lot with us kids. Uh, in the church, she was the musician. She played the organ. She played the piano. Uh, we even had a ukulele that she played, and her brother broke, the, broke it, and she was mad at her. But one of the songs that she taught, and I, I know you know this, but I think we sang it. Where did they go? Just there. there you are. I think we sang it just a few weeks ago, right? I've got the joy, 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 joy. Where? Where? I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. You see, those kids' songs that we used to sing, they had a story to tell. Kind of like, don't worry, be happy. And I grew up on that song. Now, the other verse that we used to sing is, if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on a cat. Sit on a cat. Sit on a tack, and if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on a tack. Sit on a tack to stay. Right? So those songs that we have, they bring joy to our hearts. It, in Genesis, we did a, uh, an impromptu um, story. We acted it out. And the whole worship service, the entire worship service, the songs, the story, everything was focused on what we would call support, right? <laughs> we sang children's songs that we did when we were little, like that one. We did a, excuse me, we did an impromptu play where our pianist would, would play these little ditties all the way through it, you know, um, that just kind of reminded us of some of the stories from our children's childhood. And it's congregation like this, as you look around. And that worship service was over. A couple of my 90-year-olds walked out and said, I feel like it was good again. You know? Joy. We can't live without joy in our hearts. Right? Where does that joy come from? Where does it originate? comes from that love of God. It gives us hope. It gives us peace. It gives us strength and courage. Now, David gives me strength and courage every time I think about him. And that's joy. What brings you joy? How does that joy you going in life. How does it feed you? You see, Nehemiah, John Wesley, myself, and hopefully all of you, respond in faith to God. We're able to take those steps and do things in ministry we've never done before because we have the love of God within us. 
we have joy in our heart that feeds our faith as we go out into the world. Last week, we talked about God has faith in us. God really does have faith in you and me. Why else would God keep saying this? Right? Why else would God keep saying, come back, i got more to tell you. So come and learn. So we can go out in the world, loving God, loving each other, filled with joy, so others can know who God is with us. Don't worry. Food for thought. Amen. I invite you now to join together in our closing song as we invite you to stand if you are able. Joyful, joyful, we adore you. And let's sing it with all the joy that we have for God. Joy, 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 joy. Where? Where? I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. You are filled with the love of joy. The joy of God's love for you. The joy that just keeps us going in the worst parts of life. God can bring you those memories that just keeps us taking one step forward with strength, courage, faith, hope, and joy. Because God loves us, right? Yeah, because we are loved. Go in peace.